Moving on with L'Hopital's rule and indeterminate forms, going to look at a couple of other different types of indeterminate forms here. Um, we did quotients and products in the first lesson. This one is differences in powers. This is a cumulative list of your indeterminate forms. The first three are the ones that uh, were in the video yesterday. I don't know why I did that. There, that's a little bit better. So this was in yesterday's lesson, or the first lesson. And the new ones that we're going to look at this time are numbers 4, 5, and 6, infinity minus infinity. And then your three exponential or your power indeterminate forms, 0 to 0, infinity to 0, and 1 to the infinity. Uh, you need to remember those um, so, so you can recognize your indeterminate forms with limits. So let's try a couple. Uh, the first thing you do need to remember is that before you can use L'Hopital's rule, you have to change your function into a quotient. So when you have uh, these four types of indeterminate forms, including number three, uh, you have to first turn it into a fraction. And that's what this is talking about. You've got to get it into a quotient indeterminate form. And that's going to be the challenge with these problems. So let's look at this first one. Um, the limit as x approaches 0, first you always want to plug in your 0 to make sure you do get an indeterminate form. Um, I'm thinking about the graph of cosecant, which the graph of cosecant, the way I think of cosecant, is I call it graphing the humps of sine. I know that sine does this general shape. That's one period of sine. And cosecant sits on the humps of sine. So cosecant's going to come down. There's a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. And cosecant's going to do this. So the limit as x approaches 0 of cosecant, and this should say 0 from the right. I need to put that in there. I meant to do that. Whoops. So as x approaches 0 from the right of cosecant, the right side of 0 is going up towards infinity. Uh, and then cotangent, think about the graph of cotangent, it comes down like this, and the right side as you come from the right, cotangent is going up towards infinity. So we do have infinity minus infinity. Now the challenge is to turn that into one fraction. And the way we're going to do that 90% of the time is to get a common denominator. So I'm going to change this into 1 over sine x minus cotangent, which is cosine over sine. And then that combines to 1 minus cosine x all over sine x. And then just to make sure I am in an indeterminate form, I'll plug in 0 again. So 1 minus cosine of 0 is 1 minus 1 sine of 0 is 0, and you do get an indeterminate form. So now I will lope this thing, so the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Uh, I'll do the derivative of top and bottom. Derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of cosine is negative sine, but I am subtracting that, so that would be a positive sine x from my derivative on top. Derivative of sine is cosine. And as I approach 0 from the right, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and you get an answer of zero. So there's your answer for that problem. Try to get them into a uh, got to get it into a quotient form first. Uh, here, let's look at this one. The limit as x approaches one. And again, I need to be. I should have double checked these problems before I started working them. Let's say this is one approach approaching one from the right. If I pro if I plug in one, um, I get one over ln of one, which is one over zero minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 1 over 0. But as I come from the right side, um, both of these are going to be positive. Uh, my numerator is always positive. ln x on the right side of 1 is positive. So I'm going to put a positive 0 just to kind of help me out, although that's weird. But something on the right side of 1 minus 1 is going to be positive. Um, so this is actually infinity minus infinity. 1 over 0 is a form of infinity. And that was really confusing the way I said that. Uh, but what I've got to do now is get a common denominator, which would be x minus 1 times ln x. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 1 on this one, multiply by ln x. I'm going to pause it while I clean this up. I'm going to assume you know how to combine fractions. Right, there we go. Um, and now that I have it as one fraction, I'm going to plug in my 1 again just to make sure I am in an indeterminate form. So that's 1 minus 1, ln of 1 is 0, all over ln of 1, which is 0 times 0, and that is 0 over 0. So that means I will continue with L'Hopital's rule. So let's lope this thing, which means derivative of top and bottom. So derivative of x is 1, 
yon goes away, minus the derivative of ln x, all over, ooh, this is a product rule, what a pain. Okay, so the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, times x minus 1, plus ln x times the derivative of x minus 1, which is just 1. Um, and I usually will clean these things up before I start uh, doing the calculus part. I don't like having fractions in fractions, so what I'm actually going to do is multiply numerator and denominator by x, just to clean this up a little bit. And if I do that, uh, distribute an x on top, I get x minus 1. On bottom, x times 1 over x is 1. 5x minus 1 plus x ln x. And now I'm going to plug in 1 again, and hopefully this will work. So I have 1 minus 1, which is 0, over 1 minus 1, which is 0, plus 1 times the ln of 1, which is 0, and we'll correct. We have another indeterminate form, which means I have to do L'Hopital's rule once again. So now I'm going to do L'Hopital's rule one more time. And I know it's one more time because I'm looking at this problem. And I can tell that when I do the derivative of my numerator, I get 1. Uh, the only indeterminate forms are 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. And I'm not going to get either one of those, so I'm pretty happy right now. Um, derivative of x is 1. Negative 1 goes away. Plus, and again, I have a product rule. So x, the derivative of that is 1 times ln x plus x times the derivative of ln x. And we'll clean that up. 1 plus. 1 times ln x is ln x, plus x times 1 over x is 1. And now if I plug in 1, I get 1 over 1 plus ln of 1 is 0, plus 1, which is 1 half. That was quite an involved problem. So we get 1 half finally for the answer of that one. How long did that take? Where are we in this video? 7 minutes? Or, whoops. Didn't mean to pause that. So I have about 3 or 4 more here. Let's see, this one. All right, now we're getting into new indeterminate forms. If I plug in 0 to this one, I get 0 to the 0 power. And if you look back at your power indeterminate form, 0 to the 0 is one of them. So I'm going to go and work this one as L'Hopital's rule. But remember, you have to get your function as a fraction. So now we are challenged with turning x to the x squared into a fraction. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. My function that I'm taking the limit of is x to the x squared. So really, what this problem is asking me to do is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of my function y. Okay, well, the problem is I've got to turn my function y into a fraction. So what we're actually going to do to fix this is we're going to alter the problem. We're going to change the problem slightly by taking the natural log of both sides. And if I take the natural log of both sides, that means ln of my function y is going to be x squared times the ln of x. We can pull that exponent down. Um, and so now I'm actually going to do the limit of ln of y. So we're going to alter the problem. And now I'm going to change this to the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And that would be x squared times the natural log of x. And if I plug 0 into that, now I have 0 squared. And ln of x, this is my graph of ln x, as I approach 0 from the right, is going towards negative infinity. And now I've turned it into a product indeterminate form. So I've gone from 0 to the 0 to a product indeterminate form. And now I need to turn this product into a quotient. And the way I'll do that is simply move the x squared to the bottom. Um, and now that I've got it as a quotient, it will be an indeterminate form. I will do the derivative. So now it's time to lope this thing. So x approaches 0 from the right. And right here's my step where I'm doing L'Hopital's rule. Um, the derivative of my top is 1 over x. The derivative of the bottom is x. That would be negative 2. x to the negative 3. And then we clean that up. So we have 1 over x over that's negative 2 over x cubed, which, uh, let's see, we can divide and multiply. Or divide and multiply. Well, uh, flip the bottom and multiply, so I'm dividing by fraction, so I will flip into x cubed over negative 2. Let's see, x cancels with one of these x's, x squared, 
And now if I plug in 0, I finally get 0 squared over negative 2, which is 0. The thing you have to remember is we altered the problem. This is not the limit of my original function. This is the limit of the natural log of my original function. So what I have to do is undo that step. And the way we are going to undo that step is we will take the answer. And to undo an ln, we make it an exponent on e. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x to the x squared, my original function is going to be e to the 0 power or 1. So you have to remember to undo that ln step by making your answer an exponent on e. So where are we? What? 10 minutes. Not too bad. I think I have three more I want to do. Okay, let's try this one. x approaches 0 from the right. Let's see. Cosine of 0 is 1. Um, 1 over 0. Well, let's see. 1 over x. The graph looks like this. As I approach 0 from the right, that thing's going towards infinity. Uh, that is an indeterminate form, so I'm going to alter my problem and do the limit as x approaches 0 of, we take the natural log of the function and turn it into 1 over x times the natural log of cosine x. And then we turn that into a fraction, and that gets me into my quotient indeterminate form. And this one's pretty easy. We'll just multiply those two and you get ln of cosine x over x. If you want to, and this is not a bad idea, just to make sure we are in a lopable problem of an indeterminate form, I'm going to plug in 0 right here, and that will give me ln of the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. ln of 1 is 0 over 0. So I am okay to continue with L'Hopital's rule. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. The derivative of ln of something is the derivative of the inside, which in this case is negative sine x over the inside. All over, derivative of x is 1. Then we get to plug in 0. Uh, let's see, sine of 0 is 0 over. Cosine of 0 is 1, all over 1, which ends up being just 0. But remember, that's the answer to my altered problem. Therefore, the answer to the original problem, limit as x approaches 0 from the right of cosine x to the 1 over x, is going to be e to that power, or 1, which seems to be a repeated answer. But hey, there we go. Good, 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 good. good, good. How are we doing on time? 12 minutes, not too bad. Let's see, one more, actually two more. Let's see, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of this thing, if I plug in 0... I get 1 plus 0, which is 1. 1 over 0 is infinity. Um, this is really close to what we did. Didn't we just have a 1 to the infinity one? I think we did. Um, except this isn't a cosine x. So I'm going to take the natural log. To move my exponent down. So this limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x times the natural log of 1 plus x, which is the same thing as ln of 1 plus x all over x. So we changed the problem so I could turn it into a fraction. I'm going to test just to make sure I'm in indeterminate form. 1 plus 0 is 0. ln of, I'm sorry, 1 plus 0 is 1. ln of 1 is 0 over 0, which means I can do L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. Limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Of the derivative of ln of 1 plus x is 1 over 1 plus x. All over the derivative of x is 1. And if I plug 0 into this, I get 1 over 1 over 1, which is 1. So I plug in 0 for that. But remember, that's the altered problem. That is not my original function. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 plus x to the 1 over x is equal to e to the first, or just e. Um, and I chose this problem for a reason. Uh, this limit right here is a pretty special limit. This is one of your limit definitions of e, and we just kind of proved that with L'Hopital's rule. But this is a limit you probably need to know. It's a limit definition of e. Uh, that's going to show up a whole lot when we get into our very last section of the year, which is going to be series convergence and divergence. So kind of put the, uh, just there, there, yeah. That's the definition of E, and I'm kind of stumbling all over my words. We have one more problem, and this is about, about how long I was expecting it to be. So let's do this one last problem. 
x approaches zero or zero infinity, so we'll see one minus two over infinity. That'd be one minus zero, which is one to the infinity. That is an indeterminate form. So let's take the natural log. So this turns into the limit as x approaches infinity of. I'll bring the x down. Natural log of one minus. Uh, I see derivatives in the future. Well, we'll come back to it. I'm thinking about turning that into 2x to the negative 1 instead of 2 over x. Uh, so this is what I'm with now, and I want to turn that into a fraction. Uh, I always prefer to keep my logs on top, so I'm going to move this x to the bottom by making this ln of 1 minus 2 over x over 1 over x. And I'm going to do derivatives of that, so I would change these instead of 2 over x. Let's make it... 2x to the negative 1. I'm sorry. No, that was right. 2x to the negative 1. And instead of 1 over x, we'll make that x to the negative 1. And then I can do derivatives. So let's lope this thing. This will be the limit as x approaches infinity. And here's where I'll do L'Hopital's rule. Um, derivative of that, the derivative of the log is the derivative of the inside. So that would be 2x to the negative 2 over the inside, 1 minus 2x to the negative 1. So there's the numerator, that's the derivative of ln. Over, that'd be negative 1x to the negative 2. And let's see how that cleans up. Um, the x to the negative 2s are going to cancel each other out, so those cancel. Um, 2 over negative 1 is negative 2, and that's going to remain on the bottom... So that's 1 minus 2x to the negative 1. Uh, and if I plug in infinity to that, hmm, let's see. Let's see, that's negative 2 over 1 minus 2 over x. If I plug in infinity, that's negative 2 over 1 minus 2 over infinity, which is 0, which is simply an answer of negative 2. But remember, we altered the problem. That was not my original problem. So I have to undo... What the way I altered it by taking this and as an exponent on e, so the limit as x approaches infinity of my original function, which was one minus two over x to the x power, is going to equal e to the negative two. And there we go. Seventeen minutes, not bad, I guess.